This session is all about the Docker Store, which is your new destination for all your enterprise software where you can push and pull. It's going to be uh, a very trusted place to get your software from. And we're going to be hearing from Lily, who's a software engineer on the store team. She's working on different backend services of the store, including the product catalog, search, and publishing flow. And right after DockerCon, I'm assuming like you're you're literally like getting on a plane, going to a port, and then like going straight on your sailing boat and sailing around for a 10-day sailing trip where you yourself will be doing the sailing, correct? Some of the sailing. Some of the sailing. I'm super jealous. That sounds like an amazing adventure. Very cool. Uh, joined by Alfred, a uh, senior software engineer, uh, who's also working on the, the store back end. Found out that he's a first time karaoke -er as of two weeks ago. So if you've got uh, itch to scratch for karaoke -ing, then you, know, you might have uh, a partner here who's excited to, uh, to jump back into it. And finally, they're going to be joined by Mike from Oracle, who's going to be a, a guest speaker. He's a product manager for Oracle application development, and he's going to tell us about how Oracle uses Docker Store for their enterprise software. Uh, at the end, we'll have about 10-ish minutes for questions. Uh, I'd ask that you come to the front. I'll have a, a mic over here and a mic over there, uh, and ask your questions with a mic so we can capture the audio for the recording as well. And a reminder to vote. Go into the DockerCon app and vote for this session, for any of the sessions that you've seen today or yesterday, because they're actually going to tabulate those votes and the top rated sessions will be rerun tomorrow. Those speakers will come back and redo those sessions for everyone. So that's based on, on your votes that you make through the app. So finally, come on up and let's get started. Cool. Hi. Well, thank you, everyone. Congratulations on making it to the last presentation slot of the day. I hope you're holding in there. Um, I'm Al, uh, an engineer on the store team. And I'm Lily. I'm also an engineer on the store team. Uh, that is actually me. I just <laughs> got a haircut. <laughs> um, and we're gonna we're both gonna talk for a little bit. Uh, Lily's gonna start off talking about kind of the user experience on the store. Uh, we'll have our guest speaker come up, and then I'll talk a little bit about the publisher experience on the store. Great. Thanks. Um, okay, let's get started. So before we get into the nitty gritty of publishing and acquiring content on the Docker store, I want to talk a little bit about why we decided to have a separate set of content on store in the first place. So it used to be that if you were looking for an image, the only option you had was community content. These are all the public repos that are available to everyone created by the Docker community. And over the last few years, the Docker community actually did an incredible job of creating and pushing content. At this point, we have 673,952 publicly available repos. I looked this up like 10 minutes ago, so like give or take a couple. Um, in total, there have been over 12 billion polls. So we know that there's definitely good content out there and content that people want. But the large quantity of public content has actually led to a kind of decision paralysis. So the idea that if you have such an overwhelming number of choices, you can't actually really make a choice. And that's because a large number of choices is really only useful if you can pick out the best choice or at least one of the better ones. And to make that choice, you need a lot of trusted information on what you're looking at. But remember, anyone can really push anything to public content. There isn't really that much information on public repos, and the information that's provided isn't actually being monitored by anyone. So with so many images and no simple way to differentiate them, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and just give up. Like let's say you were looking for some monitoring software. You could end up with hundreds or even sometimes thousands of results. So how would you know which one to choose? How do you know which one is better, which one actually does what it says it does? And even if an image works really well, how do you know that it's secure? It could have a whole bunch of vulnerabilities that could put your production environment in jeopardy. So as a first step of dealing with these issues, we created the Official Images program. Official Images live under the library namespace. They're the ones you can pull without any name qualifier. It's like Docker pull Ubuntu or Alpine or something like that. Um, maintainers of these images created them as part of a collaboration with Docker 
and their content is reviewed for quality before it's live. Official images are also scanned using Docker security scanning, and those results are publicly available. So official images very quickly became the most popular public content by a long shot. There are right now only 139 official images, but they account for over 20% of all polls. So the official images program really showed us that there's a huge demand for curated and trusted content. The issue with this program is that it was always meant for images of a few specific categories, but there was actual demand for curated content of pretty much all categories. There were also a few other limitations, especially if you were looking for content not just to play around with or prototype with, but to actually run in a production environment. Like, let's say you found a great image, it's secure and it works well, and you've been using it successfully in production for a while. What happens if, and more realistically, when something inevitably breaks? There's really not much you can do. There's no one you can turn to for support. So at this point, we realized that the content that was publicly available just wasn't enough. And because of all these reasons, like too many choices, security risks, lack of support, and everything else I just talked about, we decided that we needed to build a platform dedicated to curated content. And that's why we built the Docker Store. The Docker Store is, like I just said, a platform for curated Docker images. So not just anyone can push to store, publishers have to apply and be approved. Then their content is scanned, again, using Docker security scanning. And if there's any serious security risk, we'll work with the publishers to improve their content. On the store, publishers can also have their own licensing information. So that way, as a user, you know exactly how you can use some content. What just happened? My bad. Okay. I'll switch here. Sorry about that. Um, so going back to Docker store content. Among store content, we actually distinguish some products as Docker certified. This means that we've tested it on the latest versions of Docker and we put our trust in it. And once we decide that an image is up to par, we actually sign a joint support contract with the publisher. This means that, again, when inevitably something goes wrong, you can come to Docker and you won't be left hanging. We also wanted the Docker store to give users a better search and discovery experience for images. So you can search for images in a lot of different ways on the Docker store. You can filter for images by type, so like containers versus plugins. You can also look for images of specific categories or images that run on specific platforms. Users can also leave reviews on the Docker store, so you can read about the experiences of others before choosing a product. So I've just talked quite a bit about the Docker store. Now let's switch over to the store and take a look. That's not working. There we go. Um, I'm not mirroring, so bear with me. I'm gonna be leaning over a little bit. Um, so let's say I was looking for some monitoring software. I could search for that in the Docker store, and if I switch to community content, I can still browse all the publicly available community images. But let's say I'm looking for monitoring for my production environment, and I really wanna have trusted information on an image. In that case, I would go to store content, and if I'm being a little bit extra cautious, I would look for images certified by Docker. So at this point, Sysdig comes up first, and we can take a look. On this page, you can read a full description on a product, as well as see some images, screenshots, etc. And after reading all of this, I'm a big fan of this, so I'm gonna buy the basic cloud plan. On this page, you can see the publisher's terms of service, so we can all pretend I read it very carefully and I agree with it, and I will go through with this purchase. Once this goes through, I'll be able to see the Sysdig subscription under my content, which is right here, and I, all I need to do at this point is set it up. In this case, the bits are stored in a private store repo that I was just given access to through my purchase. So I can copy this, switch to a terminal, did not get the D, and now it's pulling. Once it's downloaded, 
I can use it and run it and monitor my production environment. I'm not gonna wait for that to download. So going back to the presentation. Um, since the Wi-Fi didn't bail out, I can skip all of my screenshots. So at this point, uh, we saw the experience of the Docker store from a consumer perspective. Now, if you're a publisher and you're asking yourself, how can I get my content in that format in front of users, um, we actually have someone here who has gone through that process. So please help me welcome Mike Lehman, VP of Product Management at Oracle. Thanks, Lily. Thank you. How do I drive? Is it just the keyboard? Yeah, just the Okay, robot. awesome. Um, oh, I see, it's not mirrored. Now I understand what you mean. <laughs> So thanks very much. Um, as you guys probably saw this morning, if you were at the keynote, uh, we announced putting our uh, catalog, our software catalog, up on, on the Docker store. Pretty exciting. I mean, it sort of reflected exactly as Mark Cavage, uh, who's pictured here, talking about it. You know, if you're a Docker developer, if you're a modern developer, you're typically developing Docker these days. If it's not on Docker, I won't download it. So we wanted to bring that experience of making it very friendly for developers to get access to our software catalog there. At the same time, to what Lily talked about, you know, we really wanted to, it's enterprise software, it's, you know, Oracle database, it's Oracle web logic, it's Java, it's sort of the, the tools and the, the Linga Franca building enterprise applications. We wanted it to be trusted and curated and validated not only by us as a software provider, but by Docker as well. So that was sort of the, the overall arching uh, reason behind it. Um, you know, if we go into the store itself, if you go now and uh, sign on to Docker store, what you'll see is the, the images. There's obviously MySQL, Oracle Database, Java. Um, Alfred, I think you were saying that there was uh, 50 polls already this morning, so people are, are doing it. And there's a lot of interesting questions coming up. Hopefully, we'll take a few at the end of the end of the talk. But it's uh, it's been a pretty exciting experience. I, I assume that there's a number of ISVs out there, and um, you're probably looking to do the same thing that we are. You know, you ultimately want that sort of um, experience where you you know your software is the best software. You want it to be presented in the best way. You want it to look and feel exactly the way you want it to. And what the guys at Docker Store have done is actually enabled us to do that. I think if we go to the next slide, um, one of the things that uh, obviously Oracle has is not only commercial enterprise software, but we have a huge open source portfolio, whether it be MySQL, Oracle Linux, Java itself is OpenJDK. We have a large portfolio of open source stuff as well. Currently, that is available on Docker Hub, so you can go out there and find our published images out there, but what we're doing is we're working with the Docker store team to sort of give an overall integrated experience, not only our commercial software on Docker store, but a look and feel experience around Oracle with our open source software in the same kind of environment. So this is kind of a, a great way, if you're an ISV, to sort of present yourself out to the developer community, and obviously the developers who are um, using this get the, the trust and the belief that it's a good place, a good um, uh, software image to be pulling. Now, um, you know, this sort of summarizes up the experience of what, what we're all about here. So take our software, make it available on Docker containers. We have a huge um, set of customers that are running Docker on other clouds, or Amazon, Azure, Google, as well as our cloud. So ultimately, let's Dockerize our portfolio, make it available there. Distribute it widely through a well-known, curated, trusted environment, Docker Store. Um, and then also give a great experience around building and deploying uh, applications on Docker containers. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then finally, collaborate if you uh, in the Docker community. If you go look at what we've done, all of the process for creating our images is all published out on GitHub. So you can go out to GitHub slash Oracle and it's, it's, you'll, you'll see that there's all the instructions of what we've done to create the images there. So we're trying to do this in a very open, uh, transparent way that you get access to not only the images in a trusted environment, but how we actually created them as well. 
Um, what comes out the other side for this, if you're an ISV and you're building out not only a software portfolio, many of you are uh, developing and deploying on cloud, is that you also get the opportunity to talk about using that software in whatever your deployment environment of choice is. Obviously at Oracle, we have a public cloud environment where we've got a ton of Docker options here. If you're down at the uh, at our uh, booth earlier today, you would see that we talked a bit about our bare metal environment, our virtualized environment, as well as our container service. In fact, the container cloud service that we're showing is actually, I'm not sure how many people are actually from Austin here, but the uh, container cloud service is actually developed by our local team right here in Austin. Um, so that's pretty cool for these guys to be here uh, showing it as well. The other thing that's going on uh, uh, in our cloud, again, the reason that it sort of plays really well with publishing on Docker Store, and again, as an ISV, if you're doing going to do the same thing, is you can talk about application development. You may have heard as well today. I think Mark mentioned it on the uh, on the keynote that we acquired a, a startup in this space, a worker for doing CI/CD of uh, Docker images, and obviously that plays into our deployment environment on the container cloud. Again, if you're an ISV publishing to the Docker Store, is an opportunity to get your message out there, and then and obviously talk about the rest of your product and how it works in a, in a Docker ecosystem. So that's kind of the, the story of you know, product integrating in with Docker Store and so forth. Um, I do want to say that there's more coming. So you know, this journey of publishing our software catalog, there's more to come. Obviously Oracle is a very large enterprise. We have tons of software. Um, all of our software is being Dockerized, so we're engaging more and more, uh, bringing more images there. Couple one that's, couple ones that I wanted to highlight because I often know that the developers are keen about what's going on with Java. So we are, there's a new project that started up in March called Project Portola on OpenJDK. So we're going to have a very lightweight Java image built on, Al on Alpine Linux. So that's very cool. Um, we actually just did a new release of uh, uh, Java 8, uh, I think it's update 131, where we've done some deeper integration with Docker as well. So it's an opportunity again to engage with developers and sort of again go through that channel of Docker Store. Um, Lily showed this morning uh, Oracle Database running on Docker. Um, there's an updated image that we hope will come out actually next week. Um, I think what Lily was showing was actually uh, release one of Oracle Database 12.1. Um, we're just uh, uh, rolling up the 12.2 version. So something that you sign up for, and it's actually a great um, uh, value proposition, is this continuous integration with the Docker Store team publishing out these images. And obviously this is sort of the next step that we're working on. So I'm gonna turn it back over to, I don't know if it's Alfred or Lily or the dynamic duel. So hopefully that was a useful background on our, on our experience. Right. Thank you, Mike, that was great. Um, so, oh, and you oh, can try it. And you can try it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, really that was great. Um, uh, no surprise, we had a lot of very excited store team members this morning um, and we really appreciate the kind words. Um, I'm just gonna recap a little bit about, ooh, let me find my speaker notes here. Um, I just wanted to recap a little bit of the value to publishers for publishing products to store, and then I'm gonna just go through the flow of what it takes to sign up, uh, sign up as a publisher, and then to put a product onto store. Um, you know, as far as values to publishers, we've, we've already heard a, a few today. Let me just mention a few, couple of others. Uh, I mean, no surprise, clearly customers like the power, flexibility, and security of Docker. Um, so putting your product on store, it lets your customers get all the benefits of Docker tooling to install and operate your product. Uh, if you put your product on Docker Store, we will distribute your product with the same content distribution infrastructure that Docker uses to distribute our own product, as well as the same infrastructure that handles billions of pulls. Um, you can list your commercial content on store in ways that will not interfere with your existing billing and licensing processes or your established commercial channels. Uh, you're gonna get the network effect of other products on the store. You know, before the start of DockerCon, we had about 350 signed up publishers. That was actually before our sold out workshop on Monday to get even more people into the, uh, into the publisher flow. Um, you'll be able to customize your product's page with, of course, your own logos and messaging, and we'll handle the search optimization for you, or search engine optimization. So, that sounds good? Yes, good. <laughs> um, and it, you can optionally work with Docker to get your product listed as certified on the store. Um, 
And to do that, you'll need to join Docker's partner program. Uh, you'll need to join Docker's TSA net group. Uh, for those of you that don't know, these are not the people that search you at the airport. Uh, this is a well-known organization that helps different companies support staff work together on joint issues. Um, and your product will need to go through uh, some testing to ensure compatibility with the latest Docker Enterprise Edition. Um, if your product is certified, uh, you'll be able to market the product with the Docker certified logo and our messaging, uh, and your product will be highlighted in the store, as you saw from Lily. Um, and as you saw, we make it quite easy for users to filter their search results to only show certified products. So let me talk about free versus commercial on the store. Um, if you have content that you make available for free, uh, for example, open source content, uh, you can list that for free on Docker Store. If you have commercial content, uh, you have two options. The first we call bring your own license, or BYOL. Uh, many of you here likely have some existing customers and you probably have an existing billing and licensing system and existing channels for your product. Um, in this case, you and Docker uh, will come to an agreement on a fee scheme for listing your product on the store. Um, users can subscribe to your content and pull it from the store, but they will not be charged by Docker. They'll use whatever licensing system that you're already using. So this is a great option if you're in a large or established ISV that already has these systems in place. Alternatively, you can let Docker handle the billing for your content. Um, that is, users can, will provide their own credit card details uh, to purchase subscriptions from store and will handle the monthly billing. Um, and in this case, Docker will take a fee from their subscription proceeds. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through the surprisingly few steps just to sign up as a publisher and get your product listed on the store. Um, to sign up as a publisher, Go to store.docker.com. There's a publish icon at the top of your web page. Just click on that. We'll, you'll show this form. You'll need to provide an organization and a team, um, and we'll let members of that team publish products and look at publisher reports. Um, today, we're still doing manual reviews on the publisher signup, so it may take a couple of days for you to be authorized as a publisher, but we'll send you an email once you're set up. Uh, then you'll be able to go to the Publisher Center uh, via the same Publish button on the store. And here you're going to see any products that you've published or have submitted for approval. Uh, and starting the submission process, just all you need to do is click on the New button, pro uh, new Product button. And when you do that, we're going to ask you to fill out three forms. Uh, the first form is just the basics. The name of the product, whether it's a container or a plugin, and the image repository and tag of your product's Docker image. You can enter multiple repositories and tags. That's useful if you'd like to enter multiple uh, pricing or product tiers, and I'll talk about those in just a little bit. Next, on the product information form, you're gonna provide the images and the text that we use to create your products page on Docker Store. And this includes, includes items like the tagline, icon, screenshots, as well as the documentation and the support links. Uh, and I just wanna emphasize, this is your opportunity to create a beautiful, enticing, and informative page for prospects or customers. And on the final form, you'll tell us how you'd like to charge for your product who is allowed to pull its image, uh, any kind of click-through license that you require for someone to actually subscribe to it. Uh, let me kind of go into detail here. As I mentioned, for pricing options, uh, there's two, free and commercial. Uh, if you have content that's freely available to users, you can list it on the store for free. You then get to choose whether you allow anonymous access to the, to those, uh, to the content or whether the user just needs to be logged into any Docker account for pulls to work. If you also are listing commercial products with us, you'll be able to get reports on the users that use that, uh, the users that pull your image for that option. For commercial content, you'll always use what's called the subscribed users only option. If you're using BYOL, you have a BYOL agreement with Docker, you'll enter a price of zero dollars here because users will not pay Docker for access to your content, right? We've worked with you to come up with an agreement. Um, however, if you, if you're going to use the pay through Docker method, this is where you'll configure a price for your subscription. Um, and if you create a price subscription, the Docker, then Docker is responsible for invoicing and billing users. Uh, today, we only allow in advance monthly charges for products, and we may allow more options in the future. Uh, you can optionally also allow the first month's uh, period, uh, billing period to be free, so users get a trial period before they're charged. 
Now, some publishers may want to list multiple variants of a product. Uh, for example, you may have a doc, a developer version with a limited feature set and an enterprise version with everything. Um, and in this case, this is where you'd use the multiple repositories and tags. You'd specify the re repo and tag for each of those tiers, and then for each tier, specify exactly which pricing option you'd like to use. And that's it. So once you've completed the three forms, you can submit your product for review. Um, the duration of this review depends on just a couple of factors. Really, the overall quality of the images and the text, we just want to make sure everything looks really, really clean. Um, and very importantly, the results of a security scan on your image. If we have questions or we need to request a change, you will get an email from us and you'll see changes needed uh, next to your product in the publisher center. We'll provide feedback on how to improve your listing and we'll try to provide pointers on how you can resolve any issues that come up, uh, that come up with, your, your, uh, with your security scan. If you get change requests from us, uh, please remember that our overarching goal is for users to have a great experience on Docker Store and to get access to high quality, secure content. Uh, well, once you're approved, we'll immediately publish your product to the store and we'll notify you via email. Uh, and your content will appear in searches both on the store and in search engine results very shortly thereafter. Uh, and with that, your product is on the store. It's, it's pretty simple. And what happens next? Uh, well, I'm going to talk about today and then start talking about a couple of roadmap items. Today, for commercial offerings, we give publishers access to two types of downloadable CSV reports. There's a pulls report, which includes details on who pulled your image, and a sales report, uh, and that includes subscription events like termination and creation. In both cases, we'll provide user information like name, account name, and email uh, for the relevant user. Now, we are working on making this information a little more palatable, including better activity dashboards, and that would include pull activity and if you're using pay through Docker revenue graphs. Another important roadmap item for publishers is being able to respond to reviews. So we do allow users to review your content and we know it is important for you to respond if needed. So finally, a couple of other additional items on the roadmap. Um, we've had a lot of interest in BYOL type listings. We would like to make it possible for publishers to create store subscriptions on behalf of their already entitled users and for the store to access and present publisher-specific license details. That way someone can get a, get a subscription through the store, we can talk to you via some API and present that license information directly in, their, in the user's page on store. To support organizations that don't allow access to the Docker public repository, perhaps because they just disallow access to the public internet in general, um, we'd like to have that organization, if they have a local DTR, the Docker Trusted Registry, we want to be able to sync the store purchases for that organization onto the organization CTR so they can pull that, those purchases internally. We know this is going to be very important for large enterprises that, that use this model. Um, and of course, we have a lot more planned. So in summary, uh, Docker Store is the best procurement and distribution platform for Docker images. Um, users get the value of high quality, secure content, and publishers get to leverage Docker's distribution and reach. And we would love to see your logo here next DockerCon. So uh, with that, we'll turn it over. Uh, actually, I think we'll open up for questions. So Lily, where are you, if you want to come up and join? Um, in the meantime, I also wanted to, Krish, can you stand up, please? Yeah. Uh, so everyone, this is Chris Garmella, who is the director of the store for Docker. And if you ask us hard questions, we're going to make him answer it. Great. First thank of all, you. let's thank our speakers. <laughs> so do we have any questions about getting your <laughs> software into the store or out of the store? Push or pull? We got one here. Hi. So what if your software requires an external um, container for like a database or something like that? Can you publish software that pulls other images uh, onto the store or does your, uh, what you publish on the store have to be a single container? Um, can we answer? So uh, right now you can, you could actually list multiple images on the store. Mm -hmm. um, you probably want to provide instructions to users about how to actually combine those today. Um, so right now it's, it, it is limited to just an in, pulling an image at a time. Okay. So if you've got kind of a family of different containers that need to work together, right now it would be make sure you get each of these. Um, okay. but that's a great item that we should, that we'll address in the roadmap. Feature request. Absolutely. 
or bug report? Free control request. Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, got one here. A uh, feature request for a way to um, find, if I find a, a, uh, an image I like, it will show the author. I don't seem to have any way of clicking on it to see other things that that author may have published. And if you check other markets, that's a pretty common feature. I was trying to find my own Hewlett Packard Enterprise okay. stuff. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, actually, so it, during Mike's presentation, we actually showed kind of a mock up of what we'd like to do there because we know that's very important. I mean, for example, we'd like to be able to show all of the wonderful images that you've actually put up on the store so that someone can kind of see the, the listing there. So, thank you. Work in progress. Ready for review? Not yet. Anyone else? Oh, got another one. Hey, does the store take care of uh, export compliance and restrictions on downloads? Actually, we do. So both um, both the store as well as uh, Docker Cloud and Docker Hub actually all manage, all use, all go through export compliance um, regulations. So to make sure we're not pushing to places we shouldn't. I have uh, a stupid question. Can you can you back up a few slides slowly? More, another, 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 <laughs> another, another. Stop. Yes. Pants on Gordon. Gordon really. Pants. This is what we've come to. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Okay then. The marketing people will get very mad at me. <laughs> Let's make the marketing people mad. Let's Sounds do good. it. Good. Were there any other uh, serious questions? Or of course you can you know. Ask afterwards if you prefer. Cool. I think that's that's everyone. Thank cool. you again so much. Thanks, Sean.